What up, YouTube? It's your boy, Carter TV. And it's fucking hot out here. I can't put on this big ass coat, and it's not even that cold out here today. Well, I'm literally playing. But anyway, to the story. This story is called the. Excuse me. This story is called The Man of Many Colors. And as soon as you hear it, you'll understand why. This story starts with a guy named Mendoza in jail. Mendoza is a Hispanic brother in jail. And he is in jail for counts of mad murders, drug trafficking, prostitution, um, racketeering. He got a list. Mind you, this man is only doing five years for all these accounts. How he's doing five years? He got money. He got motherfuckers in his pocket. You know what I'm saying? Now, he they put him in the jail where... The most people he had conference with, confrontations with are in the same facility as him. You know what I mean? They put him in the all white area and he's a homely Hispanic dude. So with him being in there, um, and, and he was a target off a of rip. Some inmates knew he was coming. Some inmates didn't. Some inmates were surprised. Some inmates was even scared of him when he got there. But the ones who wasn't was the blacks, the whites, and the Chinese, right? Them three wasn't scared of him. They wanted his head because he killed family members. He killed kids. He killed wives. He killed brothers, cousins, et cetera, et cetera. So he's in there. He's doing his time. You know, he's in a white Aryan nation. It's part of the jail where it's framed by the white guys. And one of the white guys tried to get at him the first night. Tried to rape him. But he beat the, he beat the dude up. He beat the dude up and took the boy's shank and stuck it in his ass and made him sit on it. And when the guards came, they took him to the infirmary and they threw Mendoza in the hole. So after Mendoza spent like 10 days in the hole, he got out. He got out and he went to the yard and he started noticing all the people gathering around talking about him. You know what I mean? He was going to have confrontations in jail. First, it was the whites trying to get at him. Now the blacks tried to get at him on the yard. They invited him to play ball. So he like, nah, I'm good. He's like, nah, come on, come play ball. You on our side of the nigga woods? Play ball. We respect those who respect us. Let's go. So they get him on the court. He dribbling. He playing ball. He try to go for a layup. He gets a shoulder to his chest. Boom! Knock his ass down. Get up. This jail ball. This ain't the NBA motherfucker. So he start playing defense back. When the dude start, when he starts singing defense, the dude go for a pick and the other dude come, the other black dude come and elbow him again. Boom! This time into his eye. So Mendoza like, I ain't, I ain't dealing with this shit. So this time when he got the ball driven down the court, two guys rushed him. He threw it to between one dude's legs and then kicked the other dude in the nuts and started fighting. Boop, boop. He started knocking, he knocked one dude out and got it on with the other. Then other black dudes shot, they jumped in, ganged up on him. Boop, boop, but he was holding his own. They were trying to put him down on the floor and stomp him out, but he was holding his own. Boop, boop, giving niggas hands and shit, right? Giving niggas hands. So the guards, they sound the alarm. Everybody get down. Man, those are still fighting niggas. He don't give a fuck. They start shooting his way. He ducking bullets. He going after the leader. The leader's just standing there, right? And he hit him. Boom, rock them. Right? He goes down. Then he throw the smoke grenades out. That's when they hit him with a pellet in his chest and he finally went down. Sent him to a hole for another one. And that hole, he didn't eat. And they barely gave him any water. Came out. He came out. And he wanted to make a phone call to his people on the outside. But before he could do that, you know what I'm saying? Before he could get to a phone, the Asians got in his face. One of them was like, you killed, you killed my son. You bastard, you dead. He took the phone and rocked the Asian dude in his face. The other Asians seen that, but didn't do nothing because the guards was coming. I told him, get the fuck out my face. Right? The dude walked it off. So what he did was he made a phone call. He made a phone call. He said what he needed to say. Right? He said what he needed to say. After him making a phone call, the blacks, the whites, and the, Ch Ch the Chinese got together. They got together. The leaders started talking. We gotta do something about Mendoza. He killed our people. Uh -huh. Then we want him too. We want him too. So all three gangs decided to get him. To work together just to get him. No beef, no conflict. We're gonna focus on this one guy. 
So they all agreed to it, right? In the midst of them, in the yard, they was gonna gang up on him. He went to the Spanish people. Phone call he made, he holds shit down. On the Spanish side, he looked out. So phone calls were being made and nobody fucked with him for the first five days he was in there. He was walking calmly, up and everywhere, calm. Like nothing happened. Talking to dudes, he was talking to the inmates who, who were innocent and they don't fight, they don't rally. He was talking to them for a little minute. And on that sixth day, it was judgment day for his ass, right? They was coming for him. Each Chinese, black and white was coming for him. They were sending their best hitters at him, right? So they got him in the yard, right? They got him in the yard and the midst of them getting in the yard, they surrounded him, right? And then one of the Spanish dudes walked over. So I'm like, everybody looking like, oh shit, it's about to go down. The guards got their guns ready, shoot, ready to shoot at them. Right? They got their guns ready to shoot at them just in case they pop off. They looked at that man and got on one knee and bowed down. And bowed the fuck down. All four of them bowed the fuck down. The Spanish people was in it too. They was a low-key target. They were the low-key people that was going to hit them from behind. Right? The leaders of each group was like, what the fuck is going on? What the fuck is going on? Why are we bowing down? So as they bowing down, he taps each of them on their shoulder to get up. Come on, walking. And they all walk with him. So you had the Spanish, the black, the white, and the Chinese. Right? He had all three of them on his side. And the Spanish, so that's four. So he walking around, looking at the leaders. Oh, you motherfuckers ain't no. Judgment day for all of you motherfuckers. So his next move was is to get the, uh, the Pakistans involved. They was more of the good people. They only got at people when they was got at. So he got them under his wing too. And he was, hold, he was holding down the whole jail afterwards. Nobody wanted to fuck with him after that. He had his own cell to himself, stacked with food. And what he did was he got the leaders the fuck out of there. Each leader that was coming from him got killed in different ways. Got they ass killed. You hear me? The white, the white nation, Aryan Brotherhood dude, the leader, his own man's in him. He got he had his own man's in him turn on him. They was all in the shower. They took turns raping the, the white dude, and then they slit his fucking throat. Left from there. The blacks. They hung his ass with multiple stab wounds all throughout his fucking body and hung him. The Chinese, they cut his fucking penis off and put it in his fucking mouth and left his ass there. Um, those were the three people that was coming for him. And the one Hispanic dude who was low key under it, he got to him himself. He wanted all the Spanish people to see him. He run shit. So he took the dude and he sliced his whole fucking neck off. He had a machete. I don't know how the fuck he get a machete in the jail, but he got a whole motherfucking machete in the jail and took his whole fucking neck off and he showed it to him. And then he put the fucking head on display to let motherfuckers know, stop fucking with me. I run shit in this jail now. I held my own. I want my motherfucking respect from all you motherfuckers. Anything that went on and went through him, he was like the godfather of the jail from each race, bro. You had a conflict and if it was something serious, you had to talk to him. He had shit hell the fuck down. He had Bloods and Crips. He had Latin Kings. He had the Aaron Hood. He had the Chinese. He had the Muslims. He had the, the Indians. This man couldn't be touched by nobody. By nobody. Until a female CEO got in there, right? Female CEO got in there. Fine ass female CEO. White girl, blue eyes, thick as hell. Thicker than a bowl of cold potatoes, you hear me? She got in there, new on the block. She working. Now, she don't know how to go into jail. You know, them new, them new CEOs don't be know how to go into jail. But the inmates run that shit, you feel me? The inmates run that shit. And she ain't know how the ropes was. So a lot of shit that was going on, she was always there and writing incident reports and getting motherfuckers sent to the hole, getting motherfuckers caught up and shit. And they was like, who the fuck is this new CEO that keeps snitching? Who the fuck is this new CEO that keeps snitching? She was breaking up games that was going on. She stopped the rape from happening. 
She stopped the motherfucker from getting jumped. She was she was stopping all this shit. Like she was really cracking down on shit, right? And she came and cost Mendoza. Mendoza was just like, yo, what that cutie? Like, you know, he's spitting game. You know, he doing his cha-cha-cha spit game shit going on. She just wasn't falling for it. So what happens now is a brother comes to the jail to visit her. Type shit. Dad's sick. Ah uh ah. -uh. She's the strut. Now she's vulnerable. She's, you know, she hurting her dad. She about to lose her dad or whatever, whatever. Mendoza seen that she was crying, all that went up on her, and she was like, I'm not in the mood for your shit today, Mendoza. So he made a phone call outside the work and found out her personal information. So she came, he came back to her. I heard your father about to die. Let me be your new papa. Wrong move. She took her nice stick and beat the shit out of Mendoza for that, for disrespecting her father. Right, for disrespecting her father. After that, right before her shift ended, right before her shift ended, it's had each each race catch that CEO lacking. They took turns on her little ass. And they all raped her. Black, white, Spanish, and even Mendoza. Raped the fuck out that CEO. And all the other CEOs turned their head on. Turned their head. Man, that was fucked up. So the brother found out what happened with his sister. They left her sister. They put her sister, they put his sister in a coma. They raped her and beat her up and put her in a coma. She was in a coma for like three weeks. She finally told her brother what happened. She finally told her brother what happened. So what he did was he got himself thrown in jail. He got himself thrown in jail. And on top of that, she was pregnant with Mendoza's kid. He made sure he impregnated her. So he got thrown in jail to find out who did what. And when he came in there, he had to join the clique, the Aaron Hood Brotherhood. So he joined up with them just so he could find out information. Niggas tried to rape him the first night. He wasn't going for it. Beat boy up. He beat the two dudes up. After he beat the two dudes up, he was asking about his sister. And finally, he got information after being there a month. It was set up by Mendoza because he really wanted her. And she the reason why she put And he the reason why she pregnant type shit. So he was high bet. All the leaders, all the new leaders, they wanted Mendoza going. Because Mendoza was doing too much. Mendoza was getting out. His five years of time had came. And he was on his way out the door. You feel me? So that made her brother, he came up with a whole plan. He was going to get him now. You on his way out the door. Ain't nobody going to know I did it. I'm going to pay the CEO. You know, he had a plan. The CEO turned on him. But when the CEO turned on him, he already knew what time it was. Don't trust the CEOs. He knew that. His sister told him that. Don't trust the CEOs. They turned on you. So with him knowing that, he had a plan B behind if the CEO fucked him over. He knew what he knew the cell block where Mendoza was walking to so they could leave. And the CEO was like, oh, boy, not coming. And Mendoza looked at him like, I thought the boy was coming. Like, ah, ah, he was like, I guess not. Right, so another CEO came in, took Mendoza, right? And that same CEO that he, that he knew was going to, you know, backstab him, they caught him. He caught him, boop, boop, poked him up, boop, boop, poked that CEO up. Right, poked that CEO up, put some drugs in his pocket, and they had Mendoza in a in a waiting area for like over three minutes, and you're not supposed to be in there ever. Tell me why her brother come out the door. Why you Mendoza still covered up? He's still shackled. Like he still got handcuffs on him. So Mendoza don't see him. He come from behind Mendoza, poke him right in his neck up. Boop, 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 boop. He poked him in his neck at least 20 times. 20 times. And left Mendoza standing there with his hands covered, poked up, bleeding from his neck. Another CEO helped the brother get up out of there. He went back to his cell, cleaned off like nothing happened. The alarm goes off. Mendoza dies right before he get out. Everybody's shocked. And like, who did it? Who did it? They trying to figure out who did it. They don't know who did it. They think the CEO who got poked up did it and the Hispanics retaliated. And that's the end of Mendoza, y'all. It's your boy Carter TV. And I'm out.